Hey, it's KMA. How's your day today? And welcome to the corner. Today we are doing our first music review because I wanted to do some more music videos and on YouTube and content in general. There'll be some more music coming soon, different than this series, but uh, that time will come when it comes. And today is the very first review, and the album that we are reviewing is the first album from my favorite band. Yes, that's right, right there. I'm using the the album cover I initially got, which was the album that I bought in America. Initially, it came out with a different cover, a big uh, word chat bubble, whatever you want to call it, with the word yes in it. This is the one I know and love, even though the other one is more of a classic album cover. So Yes became my favorite band, uh, I said in the last video about them, because most music is based around groove and rhythm. Yes is based around melody, and growing up listening to classical music, which is all melody based, I grew to be more of a melody fan than a groove fan, so Yes is perfect for that. And this is their self-titled debut released in 1969 just called yes and in the band is john anderson singer chris squire the bass player um peter banks guitarist tony k keyboardist and bill buford on drums so the first song is a song called Beyond and Before. It starts off with Chris Squire, really loud bass in your face. Perfect way for Yes to start off their career with their founding member with his bass in their face. <laughs> it gives it a lot of edge um, for 1969. We're not talking Metallica or Seven Dust or anything, but we're talking for 1969. It's kind of acid rocky. Um, and immediately it goes into the main verse sections chord wise, and then jumps into two themes that I think the band put in there. Actually, it's really one theme. It's like an intro to the theme, then the theme itself, which is vocal based, right at the very intro of the song to, I think, let people know that not only is this band sonically loud and in your face they have uh, an extreme complexity with harmonies and stuff and i think that's the only reason why that little section was included in this was just to say hey guys not only can we rock out we can sing and they can um part of the reason why i like to guess so much also is john anderson's higher voice his voice pitch is higher than most bands so i will i re will be doing these reviews on video based off uh, a blog that i've done so uh i reviewed this album last night and basically wrote a blog for each song and it's going to be out in um I guess I'll have the link for it down in the description below. So after I do a head review of what I just did, just kind of telling you what I reviewed, I'll read you what I'm putting in the vlog. Start inappropriately with Chris Squire's bass and repeats the theme with the whole band playing on top of the bass. Just how most of Yes's music is. Then comes a vocal theme that I think is just introduced so people know that the vocals are going to be one of the high points in the band. The thing is that this time, this theme is never returned throughout the rest of the song and it would have been nice to see even a hint of it in the last moments of the song when things mellow out a bit. But I am getting ahead of myself. After the vocal theme comes what I call the Proud King guitar theme. The verses are all harmonized with guitar interludes in between the verse lines. The bridge of the song is very Beatlesque, but fits perfectly in the song to give it depth. The first verse is, we started with stops from the band. The band works well with the jazzier drums, guitar, along with a heavy bass and keys supplemented with amazingly high harmonies. 
The ending changes, change of mood is one of the reasons why I got into Yes. I love the changing moods in songs, the quiet vocal recap, an earlier line in the verse followed by an appropriate guitar melody. Last time through, the whole band joins the ending with the acoustic outro that leads to the future pretentiousness the band is known for. I like it. And this song, the first song on their first album, is one of the best songs on the album. I'm not saying it's the best song on the album, but it's one of the best songs. And the next song, called I See You, is a cover of a bird song. And when Yes first got back, when Yes first got together, I shouldn't say back together, when they first got together, when they were doing their covers of other bands' music, they um, decided that they wanted to Vanilla Fudge it. That's what they were calling it. Vanilla Fudge was a band at the time that were doing these covers of other bands' music, but nobody... They would write, rewrite most of the song and write, put these new arrangements around the old song and, and what I call it is yesify the song. So it's a bird song, but it's been yesified. So take the two minute acoustic song and make it into a six minute jazz yesified piece. And that's what Vanilla Fudge used to do. They'd take a... You keep me hanging on. I think that's one of the songs that they did. And um, they add all sorts of parts to it and make it their own. And I See You is a song from the birds. I believe written by Stephen Stills. It starts off with a kind of uh, a jazzy or Peter Banks guitar parts with lots of jazz soloing. The then it goes into the the bird song basically a little I think a little bit faster and a lot uh, more upbeat than the original birds version. But it's been a while since I've listened to the birds version of the song. But the main thing that I remember with this song is <clears throat> the guitar solo. Peter Banks is a great guitarist. And the guitar solo went through different aspects. It went from jazzy to loud in your face type soloing and so forth and so forth. Um, it's a great solo, but the solo could have been shorter, if anything. And definitely if the song was done nowadays, the solo probably, the song wouldn't exist. But <laughs> um, overall, it's a good song. Um, I like it better than the original version, but I knew this version first, and I tend to believe that the first version of a song that you know is the version that you're going to like the best no matter what. So this version is one I knew before the Birds version. This is what I actually wrote for the blog. The jazzy chords followed by some comping by Peter Banks on the guitar. Actually a cover of a bird song done in traditional way yes cover songs with lots of added parts emulating the band vanilla fudge this song goes from high energy chords to laid back jazzy guitar solos and bridges there is an extended guitar solo in the song that goes all over the place from jazzy octave melodies to heavier acid rock blues leads most bands would bore with a straight ahead guitar solo, but this is a journey. It doesn't just ramble, it explains a scenario. Great second song on the album, but could have been done better. So, the first two songs have, are good. Um, and then we have <laughs> Yesterday and Today, the third song on the album. John Anderson as the lead singer of the band, and he tends to be a little fluffy with his music, I guess you could say. He likes to pick up the acoustic guitar and write love songs, which is a little bit different than the rest of the band. Where, um, well, not so much then, but Peter Banks is obviously a jazz guy, and then we got Bill Buford, a jazzy guy, and then we got the guy who seems like he wants to be in the band Air Supply, <laughs> writing words on top of it. Um, so sometimes when John Anderson goes off on his own, it's a distinguished taste, and I like Yes for the melodies and intricate, um, 
arrangements of their songs. But when John Anderson gets one of his own songs out onto an album, it tends to be just an acoustic guitar with very minimal parts to make it interesting, which is different than what I listened to Yes for. I have bands I listen to that are just acoustic and stuff, and if the song was in that setting, I would like it more. But seeing that it's in the on a Yes album, I'm not as big a fan. As a matter of fact, this is the worst song in the album. It's also the shortest song in the album, thankfully. And what I wrote is, Yes is my all-time favorite band in the world, and this is one of those old tunes I never just got into. It's what I would consider a less than average John Anderson acoustic song. You may like it, but it isn't a song I look forward to or would make it onto any mixtapes. No... The last song on side one called Looking Around, probably my favorite song on the album. Short, concise, in your face, energetic, and has all the parts that you would expect in a yes tune. Um, catchy, bass driven, keyboard, the main keyboard theme is, you know, sticks in your head and so forth. Uh, great for early yes, before Rick Wakeman yes. Um, what I wrote about this song, I think this is the best song on the first side of the album. It is upbeat, has a great keyboard part that moves the groove along with by Tony K. It is a very catchy song with great energy and kind of stoic. The song kind of reminds me of the early Deep Purple pop songs like Hush. The song ends a pretty seamless first side of the first Yes record with two great songs, one good one and one that missed the mark, but it is a short one on the side. So one thing I always consider with bands, and these are all subjective to your tastes and whatever, but some bands, when they release an album, 80% of it is really good and 20%, yeah. Some bands have other figures, like some bands, when they release an album, two songs are excellent, a couple of songs are okay, and the rest are kind of like, yeah. Other bands, eight songs are good, two songs are excellent, maybe one song is, yeah. Um, yes tends to not have many yeah songs, where you're just kind of skippable. Uh, unlike other bands and yesterday and today is one of those yeah songs the other songs on this first side have things that will you probably haven't heard before so we're gonna flip the record over now and play the second side we're actually not listening to it obviously but we're gonna play the second side and the second side starts with Harold Land um I don't know if the words came first, Harold Land, um, and then Bill Buford said, well, the first line of the song, Harold Land came to whatever the words are. Harold Land is a name of a jazz saxophonist. I don't think it was anybody that Buford was really into at the time, but I had heard of him um, when I ran across this song, so I knew who Harold Land was. Um, but I also listen to different music than most people at a younger age. Harold Land is like a marching song to me. It's like we're marching to go into war. It's, um, but it's like positivity where maybe it's marching home from a war or something. But it's a, it's a good theme. It's one of my favorite songs from the second side of the album. And it continues the awesome, well, I shouldn't say awesomeness, continues the, the good work that was on the first side. So what I wrote is Harold Land named after a saxophonist that Bill Buford enjoyed. I liked the song because when I first heard it, it reminded me of a story song, and the way it unfolds is very much like a story. It slowly builds with the harmonized vocals as more instruments start the marching theme. Even though the story is about a soldier who lost his way in the war, I thought of this song as a positive, most likely because of its marching groove. I guess it is a great walking song. The song ends with the same theme you hadn't seen in the song since the very beginning, kind of giving the song a nice bookend feel. 
So, um, I would say this is my third, one of the best songs on the album, along with the next one. There's, there's four really good songs on this album. Um, Beyond and Before, Looking Around, Harold Land, and this song, which is a cover of a Beatles song called Every Little Thing. The Beatles song, I think, is two and a half minutes long. This version of the song is five minutes long. The other two and a half minutes that are added into the song is an introduction written by the band Yes, of course. <laughs> and uh, the introduction is basically a solo section that kind of weaves high energy grooves that reminisces the first song a bit. Um, and they vanilla fudged this song. They had the their own part of the song that they wrote for it. Then they basically go into the Beatles every little thing. Um, again, I heard this version before I heard the Beatles version, so I think I like this version better than the Beatles version. Every little thing is a Beatles cover, but with begins with two loud chords and then marches right into a high energy jam groove that reminisces the first song a little bit. They had said they wanted to rewrite cover songs like Vanilla Fudge did, and this is a great example of that. This is some of Peter Banks' best moments on the album, of how Peter hints at Day Tripper right before the vocals. After the two-minute intro, it goes into the song you all know and love from the Beatles. I like this cover song much more than I See You. Um, throughout Yes's career or the early career, they hinted at the Beatles a lot. After it goes from the introduction in the song, and right before the first verse begins, um, Peter plays the main riff of Day Tripping before they start singing the verse. It happened with Your Move, I've Seen All Good People, where they have um, Give Peace a Chance playing in the background quietly. And if it's not pointed out, you probably miss it. But they hinted at the Beatles again inside a Beatles cover song. What, what do you expect? Then we have Sweetness. This is the weak link on this side of the album. There's eight songs on the original album. And this is the third song. And the third song on the first side is the weak link. But this is the weak link on the back side, but it's not nearly as weak as yesterday and today. Sweetness is just that. It is sweetness. If you like to pucker because there's too much sugar going on, and you're just like, sweetness is that song. It is sweet. It's a John Anderson song. This is the weak link on the side of the album, but compared to yesterday and today from side one, this is much better. The song has some movement and structure with memorable melodies <laughs> there's the key it has melodies the song is all the song is as the title says and reminds me a bit of king crimson's i talk to the wind king crimson is a band that i want to do some of these for also all right it is a very positive song, and it is tough with John Anderson's voice not to sing with the angels. So now the last song on the album, Survival. I love how this song begins and ends, but I don't like the middle fluff. Again, it's you can hear the Anderson parts come in, and it's not as bad as other parts where Anderson comes in and does his thing, but this song has so much potential and then it just seemed to you you're expecting it to get better and it dissolves into an anderson song which some people love but it's not what i listened to yes for it's called survival and it's still a good song i i, I having the song is good how can i say it Knowing about the song is better than not knowing about the song. How about that? I, I suggest you listen to it. I love how the song begins. Chris Squire loud and in your face bass riff. Call and response with the band. Then comes the keyboard melody that is abandoned for some volume swell guitar chords. Then back in with a keyboard melody. Everyone repeats the melody and it melts away into a nice mellow guitar chordal passage. It turns into a John Anderson song now. Excuse me. 
During the chorus, the keyboard hints at the beginning heavier passages, but breaks back into the John Anderson parts of the song. The song is so close to being epic, but it misses. It may be because of Bill Buford said, <laughs> it may be because of what Bill Buford said, ecology inspired lyrics and drippy melody. The song briefly goes back into the beginning introduction section, but quickly disintegrates Unfortunately, I would have loved them to recap the whole beginning again. This ends the original release of the album. So, the original release of the album on vinyl, that's what we just reviewed. And then when they re-released it on CD, they, there was a version that was remastered with six extra songs. We'll go into those six songs really quickly um, after I give you... The review of the initial album because to me the album is the album without these other six songs these six songs were just fillers just to give yes completists the songs that they may want to hear other versions of so the scoring system is basically uh, best out of 10 closer to 10 is the better the album is and this album gets a seven seven stars I guess you could call it so now for the other songs on the album that was released we have um, every days which is actually on the next album Dear Father, which wasn't released until like 1973 or 74 on album. Something's Coming, which is a, a cover from West Side Story, and that wasn't released until the 90s, I think, even though it was recorded in the winter of 1969. Then it has secondary versions of those three songs. So it's every every day is dear father, something's coming. Every day is dear father, something's coming. Um, so I will just read you because I don't really want to go into these as much. What I had written wrote in the review. Every day is single version. Every day is a cover of a Buffalo Springfield song written by Stephen Stills. It is pretty faithful to the groove of the original until becomes time for Yes to write their sections of the song, which I like more than the actual cover of the Buffalo Springfield song. The song was originally on Time and a Word, the second Yes album, but this is a single version recorded in late 69 without any orchestra. I like the song. It isn't great, but it is worth the listen for sure. Now the second song, Dear Father, it's the early version number two. This is the heaviest version of the song that was eventually released years later. The verses though are better in the later recordings, but the energy is better here. This is a good song that never really had a version that caught on or stood out. It just seems something is missing from the song. Very nice, rough, but energetic version of the song. Excuse me. The next song is called Something's Coming. Another cover with the yes job done to it. A song originally in West Side Story, which is a song I didn't really care for. The intro rocks out and jams along as many songs from this era had done, each with its own uniqueness that keeps it apart from the other songs. I am not a big fan of the original song from the musical, but I do like Yes's cover of it. Maybe a little biased, but it is because of the vocal arrangements have been expanded and made more exciting. This is the best song that wasn't on a Yes album originally that I have heard from them ever in my, the whole time that they've released these back songs. This is probably the best song that I hadn't heard before until they started doing all the compilations with all, the, with all of them going. Yes album originally Okay, Chris Choir is usually very high in the mix and the heavier sections of these earlier songs. This song also has many mellower sections that level out on the heavy aspects nicely. And this would be one of my, on this whole CD, this is one of my favorite songs. Top five out of the, what, 14 songs on the CD. 
Now we go Everyday's early version. This version of the song wasn't recorded and mixed as nicely as the other earlier version. I wouldn't be surprised if this was recorded live in the studio. The yes section of the song is played extremely well and drops nicely back into the Buffalo Springfield song. Near for other, another most likely live in the studio version of the song. Things aren't as tight in this version compared to the one earlier on the CD. So now it's like the second versions that aren't nearly as good as the first versions, but are included for completeness, I guess. Rougher, something's coming, early version. To rougher and not mixed as well as the earlier version of the song that we just talked about a minute ago, but it has its moments that are a little different as they are messing with the structures of the yes parts of the song. The problem sound-wise in these early versions songs is that Chris is too loud in the mix. Love Chris Squire and he is my all-time favorite bass player and I played a Rickenbacker like his in a Boston band for over a decade so yes I love him but he is too loud in the mix and it distorts. He probably plugged directly into the mixing board having the strongest signals over the mics for the rest of the band. This one has a nice different vocal section near the end that I like. So that is the extended version of the CD. I give the original release with the eight songs seven stars, and I give the extended version six stars, just because the songs repeat, which is not great, and the songs are not the best versions of the song other than Something's Coming. And that's it. So uh, seven stars for Yes's original release, six stars for the extended release with the extra songs. And next week we will talk about time and word. Till then, have a great day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.